Today we are taking up chapter The Clever Shepherd. It's a folk tale. Folk tale uh, is the story of a region which has some moral. And this folk tale will also at the end tell you what is the moral. In pre-task, we find the play of words in this unit. One word with different meanings. Here are a few examples. March. It's a month before April. And the second meaning is to move forward. The soldiers were marching on the road. The second word is May. It's a month, current month, a month after April. It is the mango season in India. And the second word meaning is possibility. Ho sakta hai. The third word is liver. Liver is an organ in the body. And the second word is a person leading his life. How you lead your life. He is the liver. The fourth word we have serve. First meaning is to attend. Like you have a waiter, a servant. Sometimes you serve the family with the food. The second meaning is act of striking a ball. That is in tennis, in badminton, in volleyball. Fifth word is excuse. The first meaning is try to lessen one's blame. Lessen meaning to reduce. And the second is polite request to allow one to pass. Like you say, excuse me, can you give me way? It's a polite way of asking someone to allow you to pass. The sixth word is crown. Crown, it is a precious headwear of a king or a queen. Mukat, as you would call it in Gujarati. The second meaning is, it is five shillings. It is British money. Like we have Athana, Gupio, coin. So these coins are the crowns. British money. The seventh word is sovereign. Sovereign, first meaning is emperor or king. And the second is, again the British currency, a pound which has 20 shillings. Eighth meaning is pound. It is British weight. When the babies are born in the hospital, you say nine pound new baby. So it is, in India we measure in kgs, in Britain they measure in pound. And the second meaning is British currency. You might have seen the currency note of a England. Now here, see the picture, crown, headwear of the king or a queen. Here are the currency that the Britain uses. So crown, sovereign and pound, they are the money used in Britain. Here we have the currency note of the Britishers, which is in use. We in India are using rupees. So you have... Uh, 5 rupees are almost out, 10, 20, 50, 100, 500, 1000. So these are currencies in India. And similarly in England also they use pound. Now let us see what is the story about. This unit is a play. Play means a drama. You can act it out in the class. And its main characters are King John of England who ruled 700 years ago. Abbot, priest of Canterbury, and a shepherd, he is Abbot's servant. So three main characters. So you can perform this play, a drama, in your class. The story begins in this fashion. The story behind this play is about the king who learns that Abbot 
was richer than himself. Raja ne khabar padi ke Abbot je priest che enati vadare rich che. This information displeased the king. King was not happy, and he summoned Abbot to his court. Meaning summoned meaning called him. The king accused Abbot of trying to be greater than himself. That means he is bigger than the king. Abbot claimed means declares that he was a humble servant of God. That he was only serving God. But the king didn't believe him and asked if he was learned and wise. Surprise Abbot didn't have anything to say. How can he try to open his mouth in front of the king? Scene one ends with the king asking three questions to Abbot. First question was, how much was king worth? Mulya, Raja no Mulya Suhadu. The first question. The second question was, how much time would he take to go round the world? Ketlo samay Raja ne lagi se akhi dunya farwano. And the third one, and the last, third and the last question was, what was he thinking then? So the first question was, how much is the king worth? Second, how much time the king would take to travel round the world? Third, what was the king thinking then? Abbot was puzzled. He was confused, puzzled, confused. The king said that if he failed, then he would die. See the king putting down a condition that either you answer three questions of mine and if you fail, if you are unable to do so, you die. The court was dismissed. All this happened before the other people of the court. And hence you find Darbar, court is the Darbar of the king, it was dismissed. The scene, second scene, takes place near Abbot's home. So scene two takes place near Abbot's home. A shepherd meets his master and asks him, why was he sad? You know, you don't have to saying that you are sad or you are happy. Your facial expression, your body language tells others that what is your mood and how you are feeling. Shepherd was able to understand that his master was sad. When Abbot told him about the questions and the conditions laid thereof, the shepherd told him to exchange place and position. Exchange place meaning here that Abbot will become shepherd and shepherd will become Abbot. He, shepherd, would pose as Abbot and answer the questions. So who would do this? Shepherd. On whose behalf? On Abbot's. Three weeks later, in scene three, shepherd dressed as Abbot presents himself in the king's court, ready with answer. The shepherd answers the first question and tells the king that he was exactly worth 25 shillings. The first question's answer is, king was worth 25 shillings. This answer displeased the king, who felt insulted. As an explanation, the shepherd pointed out that a crown meant five shillings and a sovereign is a pound, which is twenty shillings. Both crown and sovereign. Now, you might as well see the play of words here. Crown and sovereign representing what? The king. At the same time, they are representing 
the British currency, the money. See how he is playing with those words. Both crown and sovereign are related to king. Crown is a headwear. Sovereign means a king. Therefore, the king was worth 25 shillings. When other courtiers checked their laughter, they wanted to laugh very loud, but in front of the king they could not. The people of the court, courtiers are the other people who are present in the court. They wanted to laugh, but did they laugh? No, they checked their laughter. But the king smiled. He was pleased. The smile of the king shows that he was pleased with the answer. The king was pleased with the answer. And then he asked for an answer to second question. You can understand how that abort or rather the shepherd must have taken a sigh of relief. The king was pleased with the answer. And then he asked for an answer to the second question. To this one too, Shepherd answered with intelligence, Buddhi thi, Buddhi vapriyane, and said that if His Majesty, Majesty is King, would rise with the sun and travel at the same speed, then at the end of twenty-four hours, he would have traveled round the world. Suraj Nikretyarthi Jatsudi Akhi Rat. You know, you have the world is round and the sun takes 24 hours or rather the earth, you know, revolves in 24 hours. So here he is given an answer with intelligence. Here too, the king accepted the answer and demanded the answer to his third question. So was the king pleased with the second answer? Yes, he was. Accepted the answer, meaning he was pleased. Here again, the shepherd used his logic and told his majesty. So see, logic and intelligence. They are so similar that at that moment, he was thinking about the man answering his question was none other than Abbot of Canterbury. So see, so smartly he answers that at that point of time, what he must be thinking. All the three questions were well answered. But finally, Shepherd told the king that he was only a humble shepherd, Abbot's servant, and was ready to die for his master. So if the answers were pleased, had pleased the king, but since he was not a bot himself and he was a shepherd, he had taken the risk for his master and now being honest, he told that he is ready to die for his master. But the king was not at all displeased. See, the king was impressed and asked shepherd to serve him and here too, the shepherd said that he was actually the king's servant, as he was Abbot's servant, and Abbot was king's servant, therefore he was also king's servant. So see, he doesn't switch side. He doesn't start jumping and say, now I'll be directly under the king. He is still very humble, he is still very simple. He continues to be the servant of Abbot and he says since Abbot is king's servant, therefore he is the servant of the king. The shepherd had succeeded in his mission and the king had granted pardon to his master Abbot. So had granted pardon, meaning had given, forgiven. Had forgiven whom? Abbot. So, let us see what is the moral of the story. Intelligence is not just measured by literacy. A person may have many degrees behind his or her name. 
but ability to read and write. Yeah, literacy is what? Ability to read and write. So intelligence is not just measured by literacy, that is ability to read and write, but by the use of one's common sense and logical application to different situations. So see, the moral is always try to use your logic and common sense. You might see that if somebody is has to run into fire, if he wets his clothes, his clothes will not catch fire and he can run through the fire. Here are few meanings. Mission is the task. Pardon is forgiveness. Literacy, as you can read it, Sahit. Now let us see the vocabulary. Here only the incorrect sentences are written with corrections. So the incorrect sentences are in your text and corrections are here the answers. First one, I was pleased to hear about my success in school elections. Please refer your text for the incorrect sentence. We will reward you for great achievements in sports, said the chief guest at the award ceremony. We will reward you. Will. You pronounce it as will. But it is we will. Third sentence. The artist Annoyed or irritated, you can use either of these words. Annoyed or irritated the audience with their dull performance. So audience never likes something which is not up to the mark. Fourth sentence. I don't have an extra pen with me. So can you lend me one for the day? Can you lend me? Meaning he is borrowing. Or, I don't have an extra pen with me. So, can I borrow one from you for the day? So see, the two words lend and borrow, they are opposite. But yet can be used for the same thing. See how it is used. Comprehension, question and answers. The first question. Why was the king angry with the abbot? I keep on telling you that part of the question comes, part of the answer comes from the question itself and past tense is generally used. The king was angry with the abbot because the people said he was richer than him. Him is who? The king. And he couldn't take it. Meaning the king could not digest this. The second question. Why did the king ask questions to the abbot? See, we have written the abbot because it is a particular priest. The king asked questions to the abbot just to measure his wisdom and his knowledge. Being a priest, he has to be knowledgeable and hence his wisdom and knowledge is going to be tested. Just to measure meaning to test. Third question. What questions did the king ask the abbot? What was the condition? So we have two questions here. The king asked three questions to abbot and they were number one. What was he worth? He, here is the king. How much time would he take to go around the world? Once again, it is the king take to travel around the world. And the third was, what was he thinking at the moment? The king also put a condition that if he failed, he Abbot would die. The fourth question. What did the abbot do to get the answers? The abbot was tense. Tense means worried. 
and worried regarding the answers. But his shepherd came to his aid, meaning help, when told about the questions and condition. So who came to his rescue? His servant, the shepherd. The fifth question is, why was the abbot sad? The abbot was sad because he was supposed to answer three questions and if he failed, he would die. This situation not only frightened him, but made him sad. So, naturally condition sometimes gives us jitters, meaning nervousness. Sixth question. Why did the shepherd want his master's robe? Robe is actually a long coat. The shepherd wanted his master's robe so that he could pose as a bot before the king and answer the questions, thus helping his master from such an ordeal. Yeah, and help his master from such an ordeal, meaning it is kasoti. Ordeal is kasoti. A kasoti mati ena master ne par paru. Seventh question. Why was the king pleased with the shepherd? Answer. The king was pleased with the shepherd because he had answered the questions wisely. Wisely meaning with intelligence. The shepherd was also ready to die for his master. So here you can add one more sentence if you like. That's showing the loyalty. Eighth question. How did the shepherd prove that the king was his master? Answer. When the king asked the shepherd to be his, that is, king's servant, the shepherd said that he was. That means he was king's servant. He said the abbot was king's servant and he that a shepherd was a bot servant and therefore he was king's servant as well. When the king asked shepherd to be his servant, the king's servant, the shepherd said that he was. He said the abbot was king's servant and he, that a shepherd, was a bot servant and therefore the king was, he was king's servant as well. Ninth one. The ninth question reads, What did the shepherd ask the king? Answer. The shepherd saw the king was pleased with him. Looking at the smile, as I said, that your feelings are expressed through your face and body language. The shepherd saw that the king was pleased with him. At once, he asked the king to pardon his master, the abode. So here, you know, there's one proverb. Hit the iron while it is hot. Lodu jare garam hoi, tyare maro. So avakti suche, raja was happy. And so he thought, snatch the situation. And therefore, he did not hesitate. The king to pardon his master, the abbot. Tenth question. What happened in scene three? Each scene has its own significance. Now let us see the answer here. Answer. In scene three, the shepherd answered the question very wisely. That he pleased the king and entered earned a boom. See, he answered the question wisely and he pleased the king and earned a boon, meaning a blessing. You know, many times when you please God, what does God say? Mang, Taraji Mang Uche. The Raja also says the same way. Ask whatever you want. So that is the boon. So here we finish with 10 questions. Now the 11th one. 
What do you like and dislike about the king? When you perform the play, automatically you will realize for yourself. Answer. The king's jealousy for Abbot is a place of dislike. He doesn't jealousy, meaning he doesn't approve. But one would like the king for his acceptance of the answers. So see how he doesn't say this is not the answer. If he wanted to punish, he could have refused the answers. But one would like the king for his acceptance of the answers and not become angry with the shepherd, instead rewarding him. So when the shepherd said that he was not a boy, but a boy's servant, the king was not displeased. So this Attitude of the king also is one that we will like. Now let us see few comparisons, few comparisons and similar similarities which can be used in conversation and in writing composition. So here the meanings are given in Gujarati, so you can use it in Gujarati language while writing a Gujarati essay, and you can use it in English while writing English essay or a letter. Or even while speaking, as ageless as the sun, Surya Jevu Anant, as blind as a bat, Ji Andruve, right? That is a bat. Third one, as careless as the wind, Pavan Jevu, you know, free, careless, as white as snow, Bharat Jevu Safe, as cool as cucumber. Kakri, you know, Kakri. Kakri Jevu, Shita. As dirty as a pig. Bund Jevu, Gandu. As free as a bird. Pakshi Jevu, Muk. As fresh as dew. Jhakar Jevu, Taju. As hungry as a wolf. Varu Jevu, Bukhi. As proud as a peacock. Mor Jevu, Abhiman. Now you say, right now you have uh, the political scenario and you can say that some people are as, as ageless as sun in politics and as blind as a bat. He is as blind as a bat because he does not want to see what is actually happening. As careless as the wind. So he is as careless as the wind where work is concerned. As white as a snow. Her complexion is as white as a snow. She is as cool as cucumber. He or they or even you can say the slum. Slum is always dirty, isn't it? As dirty as pig. Slums are as dirty as a pig or slum dwellers. She is as free as a bird. Children are as free as birds. Again, child's face, face, child's face is as fresh as dew. People at the reception were as hungry as wolf. So they were hogging. And they are, or you can say, the beauty pageant is as proud as a peacock. The second part of the exercise, state who is the speaker. To whom does he speak? It is addressed and in which scene? You can refer your textbook. A first one, a priest should be learned and wise. Who said this? The king to the abbot in scene one. Do you think you are greater than the king? Again, it is the king saying to the abbot, it is in scene one. Third one, answer these three questions or be ready to die. Again, it is the king to abort in scene one. Fourth sentence, I need some time to think. It is said by abort to the king in scene one. Fifth sentence, I can find answers to three hundred questions. See the confidence. I can find answers to 300 questions. 
the shepherd said to the abbot in scene two, sixth sentence, how closely I resemble you. This is again said by shepherd to the abbot in scene two, because they want to change the places. Seventh one, I have come here to answer your questions. The shepherd said to the king in scene three. Eighth one, welcome home. The shepherd to the abbot. Yeah, shepherd said to abbot in scene. Three. Ninth sentence. Here I am, your majesty. Shepherd says to the king in scene three. And the tenth sentence. Don't cry. Don't carry your jokes too far. Don't carry your jokes too far. The king said to the shepherd in scene three. Now writing a paragraph on shepherds. Wit. Wit is intelligence. Presence of mind. With some humor. The shepherd was very humble, poor man. See the adjective used? Humble and poor. He was very honest and faithful. Again two adjectives. Honest and faithful. And was concerned about his master's worries. Concern is? To show, uh, again it is a worry only. On being told, he instantly decided to pose as the abbot and answer the king's three questions. See, he does not hesitate. He doesn't give a second thought that where he will land. Instantly means immediately. Decided to pose, meaning to dress up or disguise as a bot and answer the king's question. So if the axe has to fall, it will fall on his shoulder. The shepherd uses his intelligence of common sense to answer king's questions. So see, his intelligence and common sense come to the rescue of a bot. He tactfully, meaning very cleverly, told the king that he was exactly 25 shillings worth. He explains that the crown meant 5 shillings and a sovereign is a pound which is 20 shillings. Therefore, the king was 25 shillings worth as both the crown and sovereign symbolize the king. Symbolizes, represents. The second question was answered logically. Meaning with reason. He said, if the king rose with the sun and moved as the same speed as the sun, he would take only 24 hours to move round the world. Finally, he told the king, he must be thinking about answering his question. The shepherd's wit, that means intelligence, presence of mind and even some humor, was marvelous, meaning beyond comparison. It was too good for words. Marvelous is too good for words. And it impressed the king. So he at once asked the king to forgive his master. So he succeeded in, his, in hitting the iron while it was still hot. I had told you how to use the proverb. Here you are. He succeeded in hitting the iron while it was still hot. Read the pair of sentences carefully and see how they are joined. On previous occasion, we had used so that to join these sentences. And this time we are using something different. In place of so that, we are using something different. Exam. Kalam is an artist. His paintings are well known. Kalam, whose paintings are well known, is an artist. Now, if you read it just like this, Kalam is an artist, it is a sentence by itself. Full sentence. But when you say, whose paintings are well known, it is telling you more about Kalam. So, the word we are joining, 
who's painting solution to exercise sentences refer your to your textbook for the original sentence we are only having solutions here the first one mrs desai who is the principal is liked very much by her pupils so if you read it mrs desai is liked very much by her pupils is simple sentence and when you say who is a principal it tells you more about mrs desai in the first one it was telling you more about kalam and second time it is telling you mrs desai what she is call the watchman whose turban is lying here see the word call the watchman is a complete sentence which watchman whose turban is lying here so the, that is the second sentence it is telling you about the watchman i have great respect for meera who takes care of the institution so again you will see two sentences i have great respect for meera which meera who takes care of the institution it tells you more about meera invite all the members who are our guest to the party invite all the members to the party is a complete sentence which members who are our guest fifth one the traveler who was very tired was offered some food by me so if you read it the traveler was offered some food by me which traveler who was very tired it is telling you more about the traveler this is a diwali card which was sent to me by mrs desai this is a diwali card is a complete sentence which diwali card which was sent to me by mrs desai now if you see these sentences you'll find that in each case the second part of the sentence is telling you more about a proper noun or a noun first one it is kalam second one it is mrs desai that is in the solution first one is mrs desai telling you more about mrs desai in the second one telling you more about the watchman in the third one pro proper noun meera it is telling you more about meera in the fourth one it is telling you more about the members in the fifth one it is telling you more about travelers and in the sixth one it is telling you about diwali card now such sentences are said to see it is like adjective adjective describes a noun or a pronoun or a proper noun so here you find these are adjective clauses whatever is second part of it is an adjective clause now how to write a report we have done this before the teacher advised us not to stand near a building nor under a tree she instructed us not to crowd in public places and to avoid spreading rumors rumors is afwa finally she warned us to be ready for after shocks so see the places how the ad, uh, verbs are used teacher advise teacher instructed and finally warn so these three words are telling you what teacher had given instructions and see how it is written it is in third person and it is written in past tense the writing section picture story the picture is in your book and looking at that picture here we have the story one night the boy was sleeping he dreamt that the dog in kennel that is the place where the dogs are kept was his friend and poor thing he was sleeping out there so he got up 
so he is thinking of the dog in his poor condition so he got up and went to the dog dog house see the dog house and the kennel is the same and found the dog sleeping there there was the dog sleeping in the kennel that is in the dog house so he told his friend that is to the dog to sleep on his bed while he would sleep in his kennel the dog obeyed and went to his friend's bed then he checked the dog was sleeping soundly on his bed and he happily watched it so see how the picture can be developed into writing a story that brings an end to our session